Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. My name is Andrew Carpenter with BNV Technologies. And today we're going to look at a high level comparison between Microfocus Unified Functional Testing, also known as UFT, and Tricentis Tosca. Both of these tools are industry leading automation tools. And here at BNB, we uh, specialize in both of them and provide services. So I wanted to take the time to go over the uh, similarities between both of these tools and the differences to try to give you some knowledge. Okay, before we dive into the automation tools, let's first look at our business process that we'll be using to automate today. So we'll start off with this Advantage Online Shopping demo website. And what we'll want to do is we're going to compare prices of a laptop on the list and in the shopping cart. So we want to verify that the list price on the website matches the price once it's been added to the shopping cart. So what I'll do from the homepage is click on laptops. From here, I will select the HP Chromebook, just the second link here. You'll notice that it is $1,261.99. From this page, we will add to cart. We will go into our shopping cart up here at the top. We see the price right here again that we'll use to verify and that will be our business scenario. So if I go back a page, just to verify, we can see that we're going to compare this price right here with the price in the cart to make sure that they are consistent. All right, so I've hopped over to Unified Functional Testing or UFT. Uh, here's an example of the business process that we just looked at in the form of a UFT script that I put together. Uh, so this one was pretty easy to script up. We didn't have a lot of steps in here. You'll notice in UFT, we have a VB script uh, language that it uses, um, and it's a little bit more of a technical view. Uh, we also have an alternative view called the keyword view. So the keyword view basically takes all of our objects and tries to give it a uh, kind of a gooey look to it to make it easier um, on users. So you don't have to have as technical of an automation engineer. Um, they don't do it quite as good as Tosca, uh, but it does get the job done with all of the objects. Uh, most coders for UFT use the editor view though. So this is the VB script view, just like this. And before we play back the script, let's kind of talk through the features of unified functional testing. So uh, first let's look at the record feature. So the record feature is a very popular feature in UFT. Uh, you can see when we hit record, it automatically opens up our Advantage Online Shopping website and we get a recorder box up here in the top. So I'll move this down a little bit so you can see it. And as we click through the website, we'll see that it increments. So that was the first step. We go to speakers, that was the second step. We can add it to cart. So another step here for number three, and then we can stop the recording. So what this does is right here at the very top of the first line, it actually put in our three lines of code. Notice at the end, they're all dot clicks. So it went in there, grabbed the objects and clicked them for us. Uh, so recording is a great feature. Uh, it's not perfect, but it gets the job done um, and it's pretty user friendly. I'm going to delete those lines for now, though. Now that we just looked at some objects here, let's talk about what objects are in UFT. So this chunk right here would be multiple objects in UFT. We start off with our browser, which is the Advantage Shopping website. We have a page. Uh, as a second element here. So second object, this would be the Chrome tab of Advantage Shopping. And then we have a link. So this link is going to be the laptops category and we do a operation of a click on it. So it simulates a uh, left click on your mouse or trackpad. Uh, we have a feature up here called the object spy. So this is how we discover objects. Uh, we open this up and click the little hand up here. And if I mouse over something on our website or whichever application you're using, for example, this add to cart button, we click it and we can see the properties down here. So the properties are going to be uh, what the developers have exposed to us to automate against. So this is a web application. So for example, we have our outer text, we have our inner text. Um, once we find an object that we like, we can then add it to our object repository and use it in our script. So a couple more things to look at here is I'll close the object spy and we'll look at variables. So in UFT, since we're using VB script as our language, uh, we can actually declare our variables right here. So I did it right at the beginning. 
Um, I need two variables for this script called laptop price and cart price because again our business scenario was to grab the listing price which will be the laptop price and then compare it to the price once it's in the cart so that'll be our cart price and to do that comparison in UFT I'm going to use a custom out-of-box uh, report event so reporter dot report event and I'm gonna wrap it in some logic so I'm saying if my laptop price that I grab up above is equal to the cart price then we're going to report a pass and we're gonna say that prices were the same and then actually list out what those prices were for validation reasons uh, if that fails then we report a uh, mcfailure right here and then I actually just noticed that I have a typo here so instead of a mcpass on the else we want this to be a mcfail and what that'll do is it'll look at the logic here check the prices if they don't equal each other then it'll report a true failure right here and it'll tell us that the laptop prices were not the same and if we wanted to we could add the actual values like we did above um, to see what our data look like all right so let's play this script back and see what it looks like so i will go ahead and close both our uh, advantage online shopping website tabs that we have open i'll make sure to clear the cart out as that will affect our test run so clear it out close it and something we didn't talk about with UFT is actually have the run settings uh, configured to launch Chrome with the Advantage online shopping website right here. Uh, we can also manually launch uh, browsers if we want to, but for this demo, I'm going to let UFT launch it. Up here at the top, we'll hit the play button, hit run, and then we'll watch the script run. So we open our AOS website, and then we should do the exact same business process we did earlier. So we go in there, find the laptop we want, grab the price as a variable, add it to the cart, and then verify that the values were the same. If I open up the run results, uh, UFT has a very nice looking uh, run results window here. So if I open this up, we can see all of our clicks that we did on our objects. So we're going through the links, clicking, adding to cart. And then at the bottom here, we have our custom uh, validation step. So we can see that both prices are the same and then it actually types out the listing price. So we got $12.6199 on both. Okay, so moving into Tosca here, first thing you'll notice is how different the UIs are. So Tosca relies on more of a GUI uh, based UI versus UFT is much more of a technical uh, coding based UI. So over here on the left, we have our AOS laptop price verify test case. So same business scenario we originally looked at and that we ran through with UFT. And then underneath, these are all of our test steps. So the first step here will be to click the laptops link. Second step will be to grab the laptop price and etc. We move all the way through to the last step where we do our verification. Similar to the object spy in UFT, Tosca has a feature that scans the screen and creates modules for us. So over here in the module section, uh, we have all of our modules and a module in Tosca is pretty much the same as an object in UFT where it grabs some of the properties that developers expose for us and we can automate against those uh, objects or here in Tosca uh, modules. So to scan, uh, new screens we can go up here to scan application and we can do a desktop scan we'll choose our AOS website so if I move this up here we'll choose our AOS website and hit scan and then from here we can see all of the properties that uh, we have exposed on this page here so you could check all of these and have one uh, full screen of objects to work with or you could select individual ones uh, by doing uh, only a few of these you'll get better performance um, so I like to use the select on screen button right here uh, let's say we want to look at the headphones so we can click this it'll come back with a div again we can see all of our uh, properties so we can see our outer HTML outer text uh, inner text so very similar to uh, UFT so if we want to use outer text we check it and then from here, we can rename this to maybe headphones and then home. So we know it's the headphones homepage link. And then we would finish screen up here. 
and then we would save and close and then back in Tosca we now have a new module here that is headphones home and it defaults to advantage shopping for all of these so that's again just the tab that we're in so here is where you can add headphones home if you want to stay organized so to use these modules in our test case we go over to the test cases section of Tosca from here uh, we can either drag and drop from the modules tab uh, or we can do the shortcut control T uh, we can look for headphones home so it's gonna be this one here click it and then at the very bottom we now have a new test step we can see that we have headphones home and then instead of using code to interact with these uh, we'll actually use the GUI so for this one we can say input and then over here we can change this to uh, click and Tosca defaults uh, they give you a drop down to click on some of the objects uh, this one came back as a container a div container so click wasn't a default drop down uh, but if it's a link or a button then it actually gives you click as a drop down right here okay so I'm gonna remove this because we don't need this step in our business scenario here and then what we want to look at is how Tosca handles variables. So we noticed in UFT, we actually declared our variable and then we set a value to it. In Tosca, it's pretty similar. We take our object here or our module in Tosca um, right here, laptops list because we want to grab the price. And what we do is we change the action mode to buffer. So we're going to buffer that data. So it just means store it as a variable and we're going to give it a name. So we're naming this laptop price. And now that we've done that, we can use it later in our script. So at the very end, what we want to do is look at our shopping cart object or module in Tosca. And we're going to do a verify action mode. And then this is the only part of Tosca where it gets a little bit technical. Uh, what we'll do is we will say the outer text of price. So again, we looked at the objects and saw that outer text uh, was one of the properties. And in this case, it has the price in there for the shopping cart and we want to say that that equals the buffer we just made for laptop price and then again the action mode is verify so that we can verify that both prices are the same similar to what we did in UFT all right then lastly let's go ahead and run this test so we'll run it in the scratch book just kind of the uh, quick way to run it while you're developing and we'll watch it go through the steps here so we click on the laptops Click on our Chromebook, add it to cart. And then in the background, we've been buffering these values and comparing them. And just like that, we have a successful test run. When we open up the run results, so not quite as pretty as UFT, but it gets the job done. We can see that we have our price verification right here. And if we click the drop down, we can see the expected value was 1261.99 uh, and the actual value was 1261.99. So there you have it. That's the high level overview of Tosca versus UFT. Uh, really the big takeaway is that both tools are fundamentally very similar in how they do automation. Uh, Tosca leans a little bit more on the, um, you know, simpler GUI approach for non-technical folks versus UFT leans a little bit more on the more uh, technical side of things. Although both tools have their limitations there. Uh, Tosca, you end up having to be technical when it comes to the buffers and manipulating data. And UFT is a little bit less technical when you're using the record and playback. So they kind of cross into each other's realms. Um, either way though, can't go wrong with either tool and they both get the job done.